Uh, if you look carefully at those terms of service though, I think users would be shocked. For example, Skype, a common platform that people use, uh, gives itself permission within the terms of service to change the terms of service without discussing it with the end user. Um, many applications give themselves the right to share user data with governments without notifying users, with governments law enforcement and intelligence agencies. Um, many of them process data in multiple national jurisdictions. So if you're communicating in the Netherlands, you may not know if your data is being shared in the United States or perhaps in a country like Iran or China. It just depends on what the companies decide to do. Now, over time, the internet has expanded to become the infrastructure for everything in society. Banking, uh, financial relations, social relations, business, government. At the same time, uh, governments have become concerned about security issues. There's been a number of high profile breaches of computer systems, governments, banks and so forth, militaries, intelligence agencies. Uh, governments are standing up within their armed forces the capabilities to exploit this domain for strategic and military advantage. Just about every country in the world has within their armed forces the equivalent of a cyber command to fight and win wars in this domain. So the character of cyberspace is changing dramatically. Those original principles are coming under strain and it's not clear whether they can persist into the future uh, given the extent to which it's being securitized and it's become this infrastructure for everything that we do. So there's a real battle right now as to how it should be shaped, by whom, according to what principles. It's changing fast. Do you see any movements toward a certain direction? Definitely see a movement towards closure from a number of quarters. So there are pressures to uh, control what users communicate for intellectual property reasons, for example. Uh, there are pressures to control access to information from within certain countries for political reasons. Access to information that may be critical of the government in power, for example. Uh, in one of my research projects, the Open Net Initiative, we did testing over the course of three years in more than 70 countries on an annual basis. And we found that the number of countries censoring access to the internet grew from a handful in the early 2000s to more than 40 today. Um, so there's a real balkanization of the internet going on, which getting back to that original point means that if you connect to the network uh, and you're asking yourself, what type of information can I access? It really depends on the platform that you use, the application that you use, and most importantly, the jurisdiction within which you connect from. Uh, all of those are now beginning to shape the nature of cyberspace, building borders in this domain. If you go back to how internet started, at that time, we weren't we too much uh, optimistic? I think there was a great deal of optimism at the outset of uh, the internet age, especially during the dot-com era of the late 1990s, early 2000s. Uh, there was a, a euphoria around the technology. People assumed that it would bring about the end of authoritarianism, just to give one example. What we have seen, however, is that not only did it not bring about the end of authoritarianism, authoritarian regimes are actually quite adept at exploiting technologies to control their populations, and in some cases are being serviced by Western firms in, to, to enable them to undertake surveillance and information warfare. Um, so yes, I think we may have been too optimistic and assumed that the technology had some magical property, when in fact, Technology is always what we make of it, and I think it's incumbent upon us now, as the domain is being threatened, to take measures to ensure that the basic principles persist into the future, and that is going to be a difficult task.